know who I am. Anything you say, anything you say. It's official. YouTube, it's your boy Thomas back again with another rendition of Truth Be Told. Now, as far as you know, news goes, again, that, it, there really hasn't anything really major been going on except for you know all the the you know BS going on with our judicial system. And everybody knows that, you know, the illegitimate president, Biden, uh, shouldn't be in office, period. He's literally lost his mind. Uh, Democrats still defend him. The media, which they know better, uh, the Democrats are breaking laws. Everybody knows it. Uh, but they're not held accountable for breaking the law. And Republicans need to get off their ass and start doing something about it. Anyways, you know, that's the same old same though, the Trump indictment, the, which won't stick. So, you know, it's all a big, it's just a mess. Everything's a mess. But they're trying to, we're basically at war with Russia. And they're trying to start a whole nuclear war. Uh, World War Three and shit with them. It's just it gotten ridiculous. Um, but with uh, with that being said, moving on. I don't want to talk about politics today. Um, I just got done watching the new Equalizer, Equalizer Three with Denzel Washington. The first one was great. It was pretty good. Then the second one was just, eh, it was okay. This one, it's all right, too, but it ain't like anything spectacular. So, uh, spoiler alert. Uh, I I'm fixed to talk about a little bit about it. Uh, basically, in this one, he's after some type of, like, drug cartel or whatever from Turkey or some shit. Uh, he ends up, like, somewhere in Greece and Sicily. Um, and he's helping, I, I don't know, some s couple of CIA operatives, uh, you know, giving him tips on what's going on and, uh, who, who's behind it, all these, this, a whole bunch of stuff. Like at the very beginning, you see him go through and, um, uh, he takes out like a huge, compound full of uh, drug drug cartel members and he supposedly does it for this guy who he's never met or anything like that he doesn't even know him uh, I mean, he goes in there because they stole his life savings uh, which is probably happened to several others but he just does it for this one guy he gets his money back and that's it just the amount that they stole from this dude even though there was tons of other money there that's all he takes anyways um like I said he tracks the drugs and the money to this cartel like over in Sicily or whatever um this cartel is terrorizing this town he's in he had to heal up from like a gunshot wound or whatever uh, he starts liking the people in this town uh, so he goes after the cartel and wipes them out 
that's pretty much the whole entire movie. Um, I mean, it was good. It was, it was, it wasn't a bad movie. It was actually pretty good. I give it two thumbs up. Check it out if you want a decent action flick. That's the only reason why I watched it. You know, because I knew it'd probably be a decent action flick. Plus, you know, I'd heard others saying that it's actually a pretty decent movie. So that's why I went and watched it. Uh, but yeah, not bad. Uh, now, there is one thing which I mentioned on my Twitter. There is a scene where this, you know, this good-looking woman, she's interested in him. So she offers to cook him dinner. She wants to know what he likes so she could cook him a meal. Invite him over, cook a meal for him because she's interested in him. You, I've seen that maybe in one or two other movies where they've done that. But it's always, they're in a different country and the woman offers. Not over here in America. Now, this used to be a regular thing back in the day. Women used to do this all the time. When they were interested in a man, they would offer to cook for him. That like they would invite him over for dinner or something to show they're interested in him. Uh, that was the, always the first date. That don't happen anymore, ever. Women don't do that. I've never, I've never seen a woman hit on a guy. Like it's very rare. I know it happens, but it's very rare. Like I and I've been, a, you know. I, you know, been with guys, friends, and shit fucking, you know, throughout the years. And I've never seen a woman hit on a guy. Ever. Ever. Um. Not like some of these women from like, uh, you know, like uh, these fucking feminist OF girls and shit, you know. Like on these dating podcasts or what. Oh, yeah, I hit on men all the... No, the fuck you don't. Stop lying. Stop. You're lying. Anyways. Uh, yeah, women don't do that anymore. They don't approach the men. They don't, you know, offer to cook for them or anything like that. And men want a woman who can cook. I'm telling you right now. The vast majority of men want a lady who can cook. But they don't anymore. I've dated a lot of women over the years. And I'm telling you right now. I've had one woman. One. That I could think off the top of my head. That actually knew how to cook. One. The vast majority of these women. I don't know how to cook. I don't cook. I don't, I don't cook. Blah, 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 yo. Know? I expect the man to cook for me. Blah, blah, blah. Fuck off. It's dumb. They don't... They're not taught to cook anymore. It's dumb. I just don't get it anymore. How... Is the same thing... It, I mean, you're a single mother. I, I've dated a lot of single mothers. They don't know how to cook. And I'm like... What the fuck, man? You got kids and you don't know how to cook for your kids? Oh, we usually eat out. I usually get a McDonald's or, you know, maybe some TV dinners or, or uh, you know, it's the meal, noodles and shit. What the fuck? That's what you're feeding your kids? You don't cook for them? What the fuck is wrong with you? If you're a single mother and you don't cook for your kids, what the fuck? Why do you have them kids? Seriously. If you don't know how to cook for your children, you shouldn't have them. you got to cook for your decent meals for your kids. It's just, it's dumb. I don't, oh, it's just insane to me. That these women don't know how to cook anymore. But anyways. Enough of that shit. I'd actually like to hear what you think about that shit. 
women nowadays who just don't cook, don't know how. I, I'd like to know, you know, because it's kind of fucked up, especially when they got kids. Just ridiculous. Anyways, uh, Den uh, Denzel Washington, The Equalizer 3. Like I said, decent movie. Check it out if you want. Let's get on to your B-movie reviews. Okay, movie Alex. This week is Action Week. And I told you I had a couple more, uh, like 80s, 90s kung fu flicks to deal with. And then we'll start doing some regular action movies. Uh, this is the last of the two. Uh, of course, I don't know what the deal is. Like all the older kung fu flicks seem to have star Jackie Chan. Crazy. But anyway... The first one I watched was called Snake in the Eagle's Shadow. And it was done in 1978. Of course, no box office numbers. And it, like I said, it starred Jackie Chan and Xu Tin Yun. Hope I pronounced his name right. Oh. Anyways. It's the same guy you see in, like, the Drunken Master movies and shit. He's in this one, too. Apparently, there's a sequel to this. I may eventually get around to watching the sequel. I don't know. But, uh... In this particular movie, the story is... Is that you have two rival schools. One is called Eagle Claw. The other one's called... Snake Fist. Uh, Eagle Claw wants to kill off Snake Flip Fist and claim that they're the best school of, of all all of the schools. Um, these are two best schools. Well, I don't see Snake Fist having a school. The Eagle Claw apparently does because there's several of them. Well, the Drunken Master, dude, he's the... Uh, you know the of the snake fist you know the master of the snake fist and this other dude looking like uh, Shang Tsung is the master of Eagle Claw uh, apparently the master of snake fist has been in hiding uh, he winds up in this town where Jackie Chan plays this kid or young guy who's uh, a part of the school but he's treated like dog shit by his masters um, he's kind of like the like a, just a servant he cleans and all that kind of shit um, anyways uh, the the master of snake fist uh He's looking for a place to just chill out, rest, or whatever. And Jackie Chan lets him into his school in the back door. And says, you can stay here. Nobody ever really comes back here but me and the cook. You can hang out here, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, he gives him tea and gives him something to eat, blah, blah, blah. Becomes his friend. So the old man, you know, as, uh, uh, to pay back, he, he like starts teaching him snake fist uh a little bit not much 
But then he gets in a fight with a couple of assassins from Eagle Claw, like when he's wandering around the city. Uh, and he gets injured. And then uh, Jackie Chan, he finds him and takes him to a place where, you know, just outside the village uh, where nobody knows about, like an old abandoned barn or some shit. And he nurses him back to health. And the guy finally says, okay, I'll be your teacher, you know, but don't call me teacher. I'm your friend. So he, held, he teaches him snake fist. And uh, there's one guy who shows up at the school. He's like some area champion or whatever for Kung Fu. Beats the shit out of everybody. Uh, and then... The master of the school, the actual master, there's two teachers that are pretending to be master that treat Jackie like crap. Well, the ma the master had, had to go out of town for business or something. He finally shows back up and Jackie tells him what happened, why everybody's gone because they all left and went to this other school because it's champion. So he goes there to get his students back. And he pretty much gets his ass beat by the champion dude. And then Jackie Chan steps in and brutally beats this dude's ass. And then helps his master back to the school with the students following. Yeah, they're all like, oh no, we'll go with them. Well, when he does this, the, the master of Eagle Claw just happened to be outside the door he overheard and seen everything and he noticed that Jackie Chan was using snake fist style and he's all like what the hell you know ain't no one else supposed to know that but master so and so you know the old man so he tricks Jackie Chan into telling him when the old man shows back up because he went out of town for a little bit when he comes back, he tells him what's going on, and then next thing you know, he's getting in fights with these assassins. The old man takes out one assassin. Jackie Chan takes out another dude that's pretending to be a priest with the sword. There's a big fight scene with him. And then at the very end, like, um, he had ran into, uh, when he ran into the Master of Eagle Claw, you know, the guy tries to tell him he's friends with the old man. And he, he kind of gets in a little bit of a kung fu fight with the Eagle Claw dude. But the Eagle Claw dude is able to counter a lot of his snake fist moves. Which kind of, he didn't get it at first, but... He eventually, you know, he starts thinking, Oh, I gotta figure out some way to counter the Eagle Claw moves, you know. So, he sees this cat attack, it's his pet cat or whatever, he attacks a snake. He's like, oh, well, I'll just add cat claw to my snake fist and blah, blah, blah. So, he practices a while with this, this so-called cat claw thing, uh, style. And then, later on towards the end, when the guy pretty much beats his old master, he jumps in. He's not supposed to, but he does. And he adds the cat claw to his snake fist and is able to beat the old eagle claw master and beat his ass, kill him. And that's pretty much the end of the movie. Um, it's a good movie for an old kung fu flick. Of course, it's going to be cheesy. Uh, I can't stand subtitles. I had to find an English dubbed version. Uh, I just don't like reading films because then I'm trying to read what's being said instead of looking at the action or what's going on. Anyways, um, movie wasn't bad. In fact, it was one of the better Jackie Chan movies I've seen in a while because there was just tons of, lots of fighting in this movie. That's what I like. If it's going to be a martial arts movie, I want to see a lot of uh, uh, fighting going on 
a lot of martial arts. Not a bunch of talking and, and you know, Jackie tends to try to mix a bunch of, com he tries to mix everything, drama, comedy, uh, horror, whatever, he tries to mix it all in one, and it doesn't usually work. Uh, keep it simple, keep it mainly action. And this movie had a ton of action in it. If you like the old Kung Fu flicks, definitely check this one out. Lots of fighting in it. Two thumbs up. Great movie. Like I said, there's a sequel. I may get around to watching it sometime soon. Just not yet. I'll hold off for a little bit. Now the second movie I watched, of course, Jack Chan again. Now this one was done in 1992. And it made about $9 million worldwide, which is, eh, it's okay, I guess. It really didn't make a whole lot. Um, this one's called Twin Dragons. Now, of course, Jackie Chan stars in it. And then it's got Maggie Chung and Nina Lachie. Whew. Nina was a good-looking woman back then, I'm telling you. She, was, she looked good in this movie. Anyways, um, the whole story is Jackie Chan plays two different characters. One's a guy who, who grew up on the streets. The other is one who grew up with their parents and became like this national renowned pianist. Um, now, or con concertor or whatever the fuck you want to call him. You know, the guy's running away. You know, he's a pianist but he does the conductor shit too, you know. Anyways, uh, they were separated at birth uh, by some incident with some type of crook. Uh, one woman found a uh, the one Jackie Chan they call Boomer. She found him, raised him. While his actual parents, uh, they still had a hold of uh, the other one, which they called John. Anyways, uh, Boomer and his little pal, Trey or Troy or whatever the fuck his name is, which is constantly trying to get him killed. When, you know, Jackie's got the situation taken care of. The other guy's always trying to get him killed. Uh, I would have dumped him, like, w way sooner. Like, dude, you're literally trying to get me killed. I had the situation in hand. Fuck off. You know, listen. They don't. They all the time trying to get him killed. Anyways, this dumbass... It's like telling him, hey, I, I just got a new girl. I want you to meet her, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, really? You got a girlfriend? And he's like, yeah, come on, Jackie. Or a boomer. He's like, come on, I'll show it to her. So he takes her to this nightclub, which is owned by gangsters. And uh, the girl just started that night and was singing. He's like, that's her, blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh, really? Well, that's not bad, you know. Blah, 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 you know. He's like, come on, I'll introduce you. Well, you know, the main boss guy, he wants to take her upstairs and have some fun with her. And this trade dude's like, no, you're not doing shit with her. Blah, blah, blah. You need to set your ass down and shut the fuck up, you know. That's my girl. And he's all like, really? And all of a sudden, the whole club, the bar, the lounge, whatever you want caught, stands up. And Jackie's all like, fuck. You know, because he knows he's going to have to fight all these dudes. To get them out of there. And he does. And they get out. Come find out the chick's not his girl. Pisses Jackie off. Uh, takes off. Uh, and then later, he helps the girl out. Blah, blah, blah. Well... When he's meeting the girl about Trey or whatever, and finding out what's going on with her, uh, John, the concert dude, he shows up in town at this hotel, 
which they just both happen to be eating at. And this woman, uh, this, uh, you know, Nina's character, uh, her father's trying to pawn her off on John, which she does like, but she's also claiming she's got a boyfriend, which she doesn't really like, but whatever. Anyways, they end up getting switched up. Uh, and somehow. And each of the one, you know, the Boomer character and the John character end up with the, the, the uh, switching girls because of it. They end up somehow s switching. And then that girl likes, you know, the Nina character. Her character likes Boomer. And the other one likes John. They start falling for the other two, you know. They later they later find out that they're twins, but it it's a long ways into the movie before they do. Um. Anyways, Trey made this stupid deal, and he needs help, and he's like trying to get Boomer to help him out of a jam because the mob's going to kill him now. So he's got to do this driving thing because supposedly the Boomer character is a great driver, like getaway driver. And they're trying to get uh, break out this boss from whatever blah 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 from the police. Uh, it, it ends up having to be John. John ends up doing it. But he leaves the mind dry when he takes off. And then they come to kill kill him or whatever. And then Boomer and Trey end up. Uh, he they take off with Trey, and Boomer ends up having to fight to save Trey's life from this gang or uh, uh, mafia or whatever. Uh, it, John gets involved trying to help him out. Uh, they do eventually uh, get all of the bad guys busted and they get, uh, they're able to save Trey or whatever. And the girls at the very end, they're marrying the guys you know, but they just don't, just still can't figure out who's who. That's the end of the movie. Uh, this one was actually pretty good, too. It wasn't bad. Um, there were a couple funny parts in it. It was a decent flick. And it actually had quite a bit of action in it, too. Uh, I mean, it wasn't as action-packed, but it, it did have quite a bit in there. Uh, uh, fighting so it, it was decent it wasn't bad and some of the comedy stuff was wasn't too bad either there was some funny parts in it um, I give it two thumbs up check it out but most generally I like just about every Jackie Chan movie every now and then he'll do something that's not quite on par with his others you know and I'm like eh. but this one wasn't bad check it out um that's all I have for you this week. Uh, if you have any thoughts about what I talked about earlier in the video, especially about how women no longer know how to cook, you know, please leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Um, if you, you know, I'd really like to hear a lady's perspective on that, you know, why that is. Why no women want to cook or know how to cook anymore just insane to me anyways um, also if you could think of any underrated movies or B movies that you think I've never even heard of and you want me to check them out please leave your suggestions down in the comment section down below and I'll check it out and let you know what I think about it uh, give a review on it Okay, so until next time, I told you I'd tell you the truth, and you've just been told.